Oh, how y'all doing out there on the internet there today? Oh, guess what I found? Oh, my dear God. I found one of these here accretion discs there up there. There, that, that crazy slack ass and the pet bunny a rabbit of his. Oh, they say it's nothing but, get this, uh, dust. Oh, that's dust. Oh, that's dust there, and that's dust down there, and that's dust over there, and they say that uh, this here is a little piece of dust right up there now. Uh, well, does that look like dust to you there, friends? Oh, because I don't really think so. I don't think that looks like dust. Uh, do you think this looks like dust up here, too? Oh, and look at that little circle in the middle with a notch right there. Now, does that look like a dust particle to you? Well, I don't know about that there, but I don't think so. Yeah, let's just have a look here and see what this here physicist dude here's got to say about this here situation, because there is no way that that is dust. I'll tell you that right now there, you crazy that's a little varmint there, slack asses now, he's not right there now. Oh, I think so. So, without any further ado here, let's roll the first clip and see what this physicist here dude's got to say about this here situation. Okay there, friends, and slack ass, and phase 52, and all the other crazy nice enough skulls out there now. Okay there, uh, right there. Uh, let's roll the first clip there, please. This is uh, the tether in the satellite, uh, the satellite with 12, approximately 12 miles of tether still attached to it. Notice the pulsing. Columbia and the satellite to now just passing over the west coast of uh, northern Africa. The two spacecraft are now two channels. 90 nautical one's miles encrypted. apart. One's not. Controllers for the satellite uh, did have communications uh, with it uh, during the close pass uh, between Columbia and the satellite. Look at how long that zoom was. Yes, in fact, that zoomed out about as far as it can go now, isn't it there? Oh, you see, this is the kind of thing that makes me real angry about these crazy NASA numbskulls here, because they'll tell you that it's dust, and they'll tell you that it's every single thing else but the truth. And what they'll do is they'll go and they'll airbrush these things right out of existence now. Isn't that right there, folks? I think so. And they'll tell you that it's anything else but reality, except the only other thing that they can tell you is that, oh, it's an alien spaceship, but I don't think so, because I think these little guys up here are actually living creatures from Slack Eyes' petting zoo now, isn't that right there? <laughs> Oh, I think so there now. Oh, now, oh, these things here, like they just like the uh, electricity there now. That's why they're hovering all and congregating all around this here little stick there down there now. Oh, isn't that right there? And these people up here that are inside of that space shuttle there, they just can't figure out why that is now, isn't it? But it's quite obvious now, isn't it? To anybody that's got any common sense, has any thinking brain there that can think. <laughs> I think so. So, let's just look at the next here clip and see what else we can dig up on these there little creatures now. Okay, there, slack ass. Woo! Okay, roll the next clip, please. So, what you just saw on the videotape showed a 12-mile-long satellite, a satellite attached to a 12-mile-long tether, which is like a conductor cable. It's a very, very thin, uh, one-tenth of, of a centimeter in thickness cable that was used to conduct electricity in the Earth's ionosphere. As we saw earlier, space is supercharged with high energy particles, and NASA was trying to take advantage of these particles to see if they could build up a charge on the tether and actually see a gain or produce some electricity. They charged the tether with some, with some electricity, but then an overload of highly charged product particles flooded the tether and produced so much electricity, it snapped. On February 25th at about 7.30 p.m., the tether broke away from the shuttle Columbia and drifted about 77 miles away. So the scene you, that you just saw actually starts at about 77 miles away. The camera pans down. We see a long line, which is 12 miles long of tether, a small satellite attached to the end, and then a swarm of little objects, little balls of light, just moving in from all different directions and different velocities and different speeds. Then the cameras actually zoom in, and we actually get to take a close look at what we're seeing here. It's astounding. We see up here in the right-hand corner, we see a very large disk clearly going behind the tether. 
and we can look, we can actually see little, little black dots racing around to suggest some sort of a magnetic field effect. And coming through the middle, we see another very large disk moving clearly behind the tether. The light from the tether shines in front of, of the background object, which is the UFO. Um, if we use this piece of wood as an example, we can see what a disk looks like when it's passing behind a foreground object. It's really very quite simple. Yes, indeed, indeed. Really quite simple, isn't it now there, friends? I think so. And yeah, that's one uh, heavy-duty, uh, large, oh, she's a big one there, two miles and three miles wide? Whoa, that's real cool stuff now. Uh, but you can't tell that to Slackass or any of his crazy pet varmints there and critters and all them other NASA lights there that worship that Slackass just like he's some kind of demigod. Isn't that right there, folks? <laughs> yeah, and that's not only that, but his little pet bunny rabbit there has just about had it there, isn't he there? Huh? Because he can't make one single comment without people in the comment sections there just giving him one bad time, which is just fine by me, because this is the kind of thing that NASA does. They'll tell you this here creature is anything but what it is. Dust. <laughs> My astrobrant dust. Uh, what do you think that is down there? Dust? What do you think this is uh, down here? Dust? What do you think that is over there? Dust? I don't think so, you crazy NASA-litic nincompoop varmint there, slack asses. And not only that, but this is pulsing. Oh, did you notice that there, slack ass there? You crazy rabbit there, buddy? And Joanne Evans and Charlie Bucket there and Phase 52 and Zero the Faceless and all the rest of you crazy nice nincompoops, huh? It is. Oh, look at the pulsing going on in there. Now, that's some real quantum mechanics happening here now, isn't it there? Oh, yes it is, but you crazy NASA lights will say, no, it's not. Oh, look at that. Even even has a mouth there for feeding the electricity off the electricity created by this here hole in space. Oh, that's right. And before you know it, that's why there's no satellite there, you know, because this here uh, brother of this here guy here, uh, see that little notch there? That's a mouth for eating all the NASA space garbage. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Now, I'd like to show you one last little clip here uh, to finish this off, just to prove that this here is some kind of space creature. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, so without no further ado, would you please roll the last piece of the clip there now? So because we know the shuttle is at least 77 miles away and drifting further away from the object, from the tether, and we know the objects are going behind the tether, we can therefore use the 12 mile length of the tether as a relative measuring rod for um, actually making measurements of the minimum diameters of some of these disks. And according to my calculations, against the 12 mile length of the tether, this disk passing through the top section here measures a minimum of 2 to 3 miles in diameter. That's assuming it's right up next to the back of the tether. If it's actually farther behind the tether than I think, then the disk could be much, much larger. The further it gets behind it relative to the distance of the tether, the larger it actually is in reality and compared to measuring it against the tether. Oh, wow, did you hear that? Three miles wide? Oh, that's one big super duty, heavy duty there creature now, isn't it there? Hey, oh, can you imagine the size of the mouth that that creature like that would have? Oh, my dear God, it'd be able to swallow slack ass's old pet farm at one gulp now, wouldn't it there? <laughs> and not only that, oh, it would be able to uh, swallow a whole town, not like, like in New York or something like that, heck, that would be a, uh, another one of them uh, space invasions are the real, but the real thing, oh, oh, I'll tell you, but that's pretty cool, isn't it, they're all those little spirals, they're spinning around and around like some kind of quantum machine now, isn't that right there, huh, and they all came congregating right to this here wire after it had been charged with electricity, that's pretty cool stuff now, isn't it there, and that's what NASA does, eventually this will all be erased to put into the history books as something that is just nothing but space particles and dust and stuff that's been blown off of the space thrusters. <laughs>
Oh, brother, I just don't know what to do with these nasty people anymore now, do I? Because they're nothing but a bunch of liars. Oh, my dear God, I don't know what to do with them anymore now. Ugh.